and the sauce. The paste I like to put in when it's already heating up. But the sauce, I like to use it to blend all my vegetables together. Now, depending on the consistency, how you want it. Like, I like it a little thick and a little chunky because when I make my rice or my soups or anything, I like to have a little bit of that, that chunky texture of the vegetables. But if you really, really want to puree it because you don't want that taste, that's fine. It's almost the same way as making, you know, salsa. Okay, so now, get rid of this. Everybody. I hope you had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's. Blah blah blah. I'm so glad all that bullshit is over with. Um, now we're back in my kitchen, so let's start cooking. All right, so you're gonna all together introduce these vegetables together. So you take a little bit of your cilantro and you throw it in there. You take some of your tomato, throw it in there. You take some of your onion and you throw it in there. Right? And then hit it with a little bit of tomato sauce. It just makes it pulse around and break up into better pieces, you know? So look, I give it a little, oops, I'm not even flipping. I'm not giving it a little nothing unless I flip this thing. There we go. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Now depending on your desired consistency, See how you want to leave it. Me, I prefer to leave mine a little chunky because I like to use it in a lot of different, a lot of different foods. So we're gonna do this here. So you can see. So it sort of looks like a chunky salsa, okay? And you're just gonna keep throwing this in the pot. We're gonna do this process over and over until everything is ground down to perfection. Okay? So we're gonna continue doing this. And remember, a little bit of that. Take your cilantro, fresh cilantro. Make sure, don't go and buy different vegetables from different places because you, you pretty much want your produce to be all from the same time. Um, so I would suggest you have extra onions in there and then you bought everything fresh but you're going to use the older onions. No, no, don't do that. Just go and get fresh everything and make sure everything is at the same, the same decomposition rate, I, I should say. I also cook this a little bit. So, you know, I freeze some of it. You can put it in ice cubes. Um, Add some more sauce. Add some more sauce. And just keep adding until you get all of this stuff. Remember, onions, peppers, cilantro. And then we do the dry stuff, okay? Epa! Oh, you know what? I need some poquito! Epa! Aha! Woo! Oh yes! I drank a lot of this for the holidays. Oh my god, I got sick like a door. But holidays are over. And you know I gotta finish drinking. All this stuff so it doesn't go bad. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Alrighty. Salud! Alright. So we're gonna keep doing this with the food processor and getting all of this, all the vegetables in there. And what's good about this is you could put this in soup. Um, some people rub it on their meat, like on, on, some people rub it on their pork. I've seen people put it on their chicken. Um, 
I've seen so many ways that people use sofrito. And what's amazing is it's not only Spanish people that are using sofrito now. Um, a lot of different nationalities are starting to use vegetables. And if you think about it, it's actually the healthier way. So, my grandmother used to have me cutting up the vegetables. I was her, I was her apron string. And now I could really appreciate the fact that I got to keep a lot of the techniques that she taught me and my passion for cooking started with her. So, I give all the props to my grandma. So we're almost done here. And it doesn't matter how you mix it or blend it up or whatever, because it's all gonna go into the pot and we're gonna cook it down. So. And then we're gonna add our dry spices. We're gonna add our dry spices to this because our, our dry spices also act as a preservative. So the only thing, the only two things I won't mix together is because I said the garlic is a stabilizer. You don't want to mix those two things together. But you can use the garlic as you're cooking. So you introduce your sofrito, and then when you need the garlic, you go and you just spoon it in. It's, it's just better like that. And by the way, this coquito is insane. Insane! Oh my God. This music reminds me of, of my grandfather, and I come from a very musically inclined family. My great grandfather, his name was Damian. Um, he used to play an instrument in the street called a timbal, timbal, and he would play that all the time, that constantly. Well, it turns out that my great grandfather made a record when. He was in the campo in Puerto Rico, and um, he, he never got paid for it. You know, that's how a lot of that Hibaro music was, they just stole it. But his name was actually on a record, so kudos to him. Um, they used to have these jam sessions. They would get drunk in the house, right? Wasted. And they would like pull out guayos and maracas and pots and pans and whatever you could possibly think of. And in the Puerto Rican kitchen, became a jam session. Music is a part of our food. It's a part of our life, a part of our culture. So this way, when I hear Hibaro Campo music, it just brings me back. It's just, it just makes it complete, you know? Never forget where you came from. History is so important. So we're moving right along here. And this is looking delicious, okay? Now, at this point, at this stage, do you know what we have? We have salsa. So if you wanted to stop at this stage, now that you've blended the cilantro and, and, and the tomatoes and all of that, that's salsa. You add a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of lime, and it's salsa. There you go, go to town. Um, now, we're gonna get technical because this becomes a real pain in the ass. By the way, I got flan coming out my ass. I don't want to do flan and I don't even want to talk about it. All right. Hey! You know how they did that, right? I would be there all small and my, my great uncles and aunts would be dancing and all of that. And I was just absorbing it like a sponge. I was like, wow, partying is cool. <laughs> all right. So we're almost done, and I think I'm getting a little buzz. I love you people. <laughs> Alrighty. So look, it's almost all done. And like I told you before, people, when you're cooking, put in the work. If you're not gonna put in the work, get out of the kitchen. Just order from the Chinese food, you know? Shit. Epa! Epa! Oh my god. 
I'm such a Puerto Rican in the mountains. It's just so not. <laughs> all right, so I'm getting all of these in there, all right? And there we go, we're gonna blend that. And I'm gonna show you what, the, what this is expected to look like, okay? So you know whether you did it. Well, listen, whether you do it right or wrong, how can you screw up vegetables? They're freaking delicious. So there we we got all that stuff ground up, right? right. Now, now, I like to throw in a can of crushed tomatoes. My grandmother didn't do this, but I like to do it. I do, I just like that, those little bits, you know, and when they're in the rice or in whatever, it's just delicious. You could opt out of that. Like I told you, you know, I just change things up a little bit because I like to do it that way. So, look, boom, a little bit of that in there. Oh. Some diced ones. I like diced tomatoes, crushed tomatoes, fresh tomatoes, you know, everything. Throw it on. In la cocina latina, la comida no se bota. You use it all. So here we go. And those were just diced chunk tomatoes, right? So now I'm gonna I'm gonna move the camera so you guys can see, okay? Look. Right? So I'm gonna take all of that and it's gonna go to the stove. Now, I told you about the tomato paste. I also add the tomato paste. So you're gonna open up these cans and you're gonna pour the tomato paste in there. It's all gonna boil down and I'm gonna take you there. I'm gonna take you through all the steps so that you can get it right and your food can be delicious and we can move on to the next show. So, remember, three cans of tomato paste, three cans of tomato sauce, a can of crushed tomatoes, if you want to. Some people put ajecitos, some people put, um, they put um, uh, culantro. I actually put it in my accent, so it has culantro y achute, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to make the achote too. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you. For all of you guys. All right, so I got my, my three cans of paste. That's gonna go in here too. Everything. All in there, all in there. Look at that. Woo, that is looking, don't worry, I'm gonna bring you guys here so you can see. Let me just get everything in the pot. We're making a lot, remember, three cans. You can't screw this up. Grandmother used to do that, so you're gonna have to deal with that shit. Hey! <laughs> Woo! Alright. So you're gonna get the giant cuchara. You're not Spanish if you don't have a giant cuchara. And you're just gonna mix all that up. I'm gonna bring you there in a minute, okay? With my dry herbs and everything, okay? All right. Now to that, we have a lot of dry items, okay? I like to throw a bay leaf in there, okay? So we're gonna put that in there. I also like to throw two paquetes of sazon. Some oregano, okay, I throw that in there. Olive oil, okay? So I'm gonna put the olive oil in there. 
The olive oil, I put about a cup, a cup and a half, okay? And make sure you get good olive oil. You don't want no shitty olive oil, okay? So I put that and I'm going to go for another half a cup. And then on top of that, on top of that, I actually add pure vegetable oil, okay? So you're going to do about a cup and a half of pure vegetable oil as well, okay? So let's do that. Now, the other oil I am going to boil down because I need to make the achote, okay? The achote is this. This is the achote seed, okay? Let me show you what happens with this. You're going to need a strainer and a shitty pot. You know, a pot that you don't like because if you use a good pot, it's going to get all screwed up. So you take achote and you pour it in the pot. Achote is a seed and it's like a dye, okay? Check it. You see that? It's like, you see that? You see that shit? Yeah, okay. All right. And then you're gonna add the oil to here. And this is what gives it its beautiful color, okay? We want it to have a gorgeous color. So this we bring to a heat and it comes to a boil and then we add that also to our sofrito mixture. So many steps, right? But it's so worth it. It's just so worth it. Um, you're going to take a couple of bay leaves too and you're going to throw that in there as well. Okay? You, you Remember, you pluck these out later so don't crumble them or anything. You just throw them in there and let them cook. Okay. To this, I like to add my my dry mixture, okay? My dry mixture con consists of two packets of this culantro yachote by Sazon, okay? So I like to put all these things together. Okay? have any questions you know just inbox me and I'll you know I'll be happy to go over anything you missed all right so in here I open the two sobres of the sazon um, I'm also gonna put adobo in here because remember when I make my rice the only thing I have to add is a spoon of this and basically it's, it's pretty much done I also add some oregano <laughs> flavor um it's optional for you like i said your dry mixture let it be what you usually use this way it's not too far off your realm and it's something that you enjoy you know what i'm saying there's no sense in, in putting something that you're not accustomed to so stick to your spices just you know kick it up a notch a little bit you know um so i got all of that in there and um my oregano and what i like to do is i add all of this right into the pot Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna bring you guys over here so you can see what's going on in my pot because it's, it's, it's um looking good and pretty amazing, okay? And this is what you're gonna need every time you're gonna cook Spanish food. So you might as well learn how to get this like down packed, okay? So here it is. And we're gonna let this cook down. See how pretty that's looking? That's all your vegetables. That's your sofrito. Everything is in here and you're gonna let this cook down, okay? And then you're gonna look over here. You see that? The achote is gonna start boiling and start turning red. Can you see that? And that is what actually gives the, the um, you know, when you get Spanish rice, that gives it its beautiful red color. It's just an amazing color. It looks so pretty. And the um, sofrito is just cooking and looking lovely. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And now you want to cook that down. 
And you're gonna add this to like everything. Oh my God. Soup, stocks, anything. Pork, fish, chicken. This goes on everything. And then what I do now is I take um, this achote that's getting nice and red. And you have to make sure, okay, that the achote doesn't burn. You don't want it. You don't want it to burn, okay? You don't want it to burn. So you just make sure that it turns red. Once it's red, it's ready. Okay, I'm gonna show you now, okay? I'm gonna put this right over the pot. You don't want any of these seeds to get inside your sofrito, okay? No. And you're gonna pour that right over your vegetables while they're cooking, okay? Yes, look at that. Let me show you this. All right, so that's cooking. And there you are. And that is sofrito, people. Now I leave this, I let this cook for about 30 minutes on the pot because I want the vegetables to actually cook. So I bring this to a boil and I just let this, you know, simmer. But basically, it's done. So that's what it is. In, and you pack it in containers and or ice cubes or whatever you want, you know? Now I'm gonna oh, it's hot in this kitchen, let me turn my fan on. Um, um all right, let me show you how I make the garlic. The garlic, okay? I have my little processor for the garlic, okay? Let me show you. Now the thing with this garlic is, I, I use it, you can use this garlic um, for garlic bread. Um, it's also good for Italian cuisine. Um, you could use what I'm gonna show you now with any food that you make, any chef anywhere, any, any country calls for garlic, okay? So let me show you what I do. Um, I was lazy, so I already bought the, um, the one that's already peeled and cleaned, okay? So, oh God, there's nothing like the smell of fresh garlic, okay? So what I do with this, this is gonna be delicious, okay? Make sure that you go to the chinos, or if you order a lot of chi Chinese soup or whatever, save the containers. I go to the store and I buy them in bulk. Um, all right, you're gonna take your garlic, right? And you throw it in your little food processor. It's always good if you have a little food processor. You don't have to, the big one, it sucks. All right, so to this, I'm gonna give it a, a quick pulse, okay? Now, this is what I also, this is also what you use to make a mojito, you know? Like uh, for your totones. So pretty much, it's, it's, it's the same thing. I blend that down to like butter. And it starts to get like a cream. Is what I like to take it down to, okay? Again, you rub this all over chicken. You put this on everything, okay? Now, the way I get it to get that, now look at this, you gotta see this. Could you imagine? all this fresh garlic like that. Look at that. Could you imagine what you can make with all of this? This is the diamond right here. So not only am I teaching you how to make the sofrito, but I'm giving you my secret weapon right here for everything delicious, okay? So I use again extra virgin olive oil. You can use garlic, uh, you can use goya, you can use any olive oil, okay? I'm not, I, I just prefer extra virgin olive oil, okay? And you're gonna add that to your garlic, okay? And, and be generous, you want this to be wet. You want this to be creamy, you want it to be almost like a paste. Yeah, pretty much a paste, okay? So now I'm gonna whip it again, I'll whip it up again in my little process again. And then I add, all right it's almost ready and then to this I like to add a little bit of white vinegar again white vinegar is a preservative and it keeps your your product fresher and it gives it 
nice little sink. I think I, I enjoy it. So you put um, about three cups of vinegar in there. One more thing. And now we are going to put oregano. I like to put oregano in there. And this way when I, I get Italian bread, I cut it and then I smear this in the inside of the Italian bread and I stick it in the oven. Oh my God, it's the best garlic bread you ever had in your life. This just makes everything the best you ever had in your life. For real. So I take about a, a teaspoon of oregano and I put it in there and then I'm going to give a quick coffee again. Then I'm going to show you what it comes out like. It's this delicious, creamy, Ooh, I'm so wow. Wow. Let me show you what this looks like, okay? Oh boy. Wait a minute to see what this looks like. This is just too good. Too good. Here you go. Here you go. There you go. And this is your garlic puree. And this is what you use for mojito. You know, um, to dunk on your chicken, your tostones. Uh, oh my God. It, it's just what you need for everything. Garlic bread, anything you need that calls for garlic, this is the way to put it in there, okay? Well, you guys got to see how I made my sofrito. And my secret weapon, my garlic, my garlic mixture. Now what I do with the sofrito is I let that um, cook for about a half hour and then I let it cool down for about 40 minutes and then I put them in these little containers and I freeze them in my deep freeze. So um, if you are going to make it smaller, remember if you're going to use um, three tomatoes, three onions, three peppers, just make sure that you have the equivalent balance of vegetables on each side, okay? Um, from my kitchen to yours, God bless and have a good night. I love you. Bye.